Yeah. What? He's a slut. They're greedy. They're stealers. And they're evil. So don't tell me about the 90s, son. Yes, indeed, Tom McNamara's back from Lackawanna, and so are we, checking out highlights of the talk shows. Greg Kinnear back with you one more time from Southern California, where we've got earthquakes, and we've got fires, and we've got floods, locust plagues, and now slides. In fact, they say these are the worst slides since the last E ratings book to come out, and I... Just kidding. Can I joke with you anymore for crying out loud? Actually, Talk Soup, the award-winning Talk Soup, narrowly clipped the Super Bowl. Thank you. Thank you very much. Coming up, Vicki Lawrence gyrates her hips like a paint mixer in overdrive. What if Lorena Bobbitt had cut off her husband's ears? Plus, I love you, and I've got the tussie-mussie to prove it. It's all... First up, when it comes to attracting men, Misha is on America's most wanted list. No question about it. Monday on the Montel Williams Show, two different gentlemen proposed to this young lady. Maybe you saw it. Well, maybe you didn't. One of them was Tavares, her current boyfriend. The other guy who you're going to see here featured in this clip is John, the man who unceremoniously dumped her after three years of dating. Let's see how John fared when he popped the big, 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 big... Big question. Me, sir. <laughs> I'm over here. Okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, in front of the whole world. National television, I'm asking you to please marry me. I know that you might say no, but just say yes, baby, because all the things that we went through, all those problems, it's going to be all right. Just have it be all right, okay? Please say yeah. John. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to help you out in a second here. Oh, I'm glad you're on your own right this minute. I know how you may feel, and I know that in your heart this is the way you feel, but my feelings aren't the same as yours anymore. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> my feelings aren't the same as yours anymore. I found somebody else, or someone else found me, I should say, and I think we're pretty happy and we're very compatible. And so, therefore, I have to decline. <laughs> no! Oh. Bob, tell him what he lost. Well, Greg, John will have to return that beautiful After Six tuxedo. That will set him back $49.95. And the flowers he's holding will soon wilt and cost him $16.52. And if he can, he'll have to return that diamond ring or lose $2,498. Total loss of revenue, $3,210.52. Huh? Well, 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 I'm not... On my tell show this Thursday, meet a woman who accessorized her wedding dress with a pair of handcuffs. It's the Outlaw Bride Thursday. Hey, you know, John, don't feel bad. It's not like she's saying, you know, yes to everybody. Will you marry me? Of course. Oh. <laughs> Maybe she is. Most of us equate youth with open-mindedness, but these guests from the Sally Jesse Raphael show seem to have their minds hermetically sealed, like a vault, tight. They're teen racists. They hate anyone who looks, thinks, and acts differently than they do. Fortunately, that includes the vast majority of the population. As it turns out, this now is the highlight of Sally. Jennifer, you say the children are the, the Jews are the children of the devil. Uh, what does that mean and why? Um, in the Bible, it's John 8, 44, co clearly states that they're the sons of Cain, sons and daughters of Cain. Um, they're liars, they're greedy, they're stealers, mm -hmm. and they're evil. And you want, you would like to send them all where? Off the face of the earth or get Definitely. rid of them? When God returns, they will all die. Mm. Okay. Alicia, you say you have the solution that blacks should go back to Africa? Yes. I live in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. It's a white community. We have virtually zero crime rate. I have also lived in California. 
where the races are mixed. There is much more games, drugs, violence. We don't have that where I am, and it's a white community. And I'm not saying we will be free of crime. I'm saying there will be less crime. Have you thought through how you'd send them back? I'm not saying it's a realistic thing. I'm oh. saying that is what, you know, if I could choose it, that is the way I would choose it to be. Yes, indeed. It's Alicia proving that the line is indeed becoming more and more blurry between redhead and redneck. An author on the show later said that many of today's teens suffer from self-esteem problems. Some of them build themselves up by putting other people down. On Sally's show this Thursday, it's the saga of Janice Pennington, the Price is Right hostess who unwittingly married an international spy. Oh, no. What's Bob going to say about that? Lorena and John Bobbitt have both been acquitted for their crimes against one another and, of course, against nature, but the media continues to try their case pretty much on television these days. Exhibit A right now, this highlight from the Bertice Berry Show. Here is radio personality Catherine Johns commenting on the all-too-familiar Bobbitt controversy. And first off, we start with a Bertice Berry talk soup rhetorical question of the day. If Lorena Bobbitt had cut off John's old ears, would we be talking about it as no, much? Not at well, all. Well, we're all fascinated with penises, especially men. And uh, I think that's why... No, I'm serious. Isn't that true? No, oh, and like women are Are you saying and that women, women aren't fascinated with them well, too? Then, oh, well, that's, that's a classic <laughs> statement of penis envy. I that's know, what that is. <laughs> some of us like them just well, fine. Well, just getting Freudian. But penis envy, uh, that's what a about Freudian Lorena term. envy? Are women envious of Lorena? No. Well, I'm not. I don't know. I wouldn't claim to speak for all women, but I think she's a nitwit. Barbara? Uh, <laughs> I knew Barbara wasn't like No, I, I don't agree with that. I'm not for people detaching a penis from any male. Well, that's, I think it's... Uh... Lorena Bobbitt pleaded temporarily insane, got off with 45 days, little psychiatric treatment. All John got was apparently a few of these tasteless t-shirts. Do we have... You've made t-shirts from the trial. This one says, Bobbitt trial, you lose, you snooze. This one is, uh, he lost that loving feeling. Wow. <laughs> Love hurts. And I'd rather be penniless. I think that's what that says. <laughs> and you can't be first, you could be next. Uh, you, you... Uh, mm, yes. Thursday, Bertice looks into a story involving 19 kids found living in a condemned apartment in Chicago. It's a case of neglect. You'll hear the real story Thursday. We'll take a quick break and be back. When, in fact, was the last time you got your butter whipped? Hmm? And, goodness me, it's Tussie Mussy time again. Like a hangover from a three-day Sanka bender, it's Talk Soup. Greg Kinnear still with you. Monday, Ricky Lake posed the thorning question, do minorities complain about racism too much? Taking of opposite views, a stand-up comedian named Joe, also Ken, a, a very popular radio talk show host. Joe thinks African Americans need to continue talking about prejudice, while Ken thinks things really aren't that bad. Take a look at this. You work hard, and you can go to Bloomingdale's. All right? You know and whenever I go to Bloomingdale's and somebody follows me, you know what I assume? They're there to help me. Because I never leave home without the card. I'm, I'm I want to know that. why everyone is moaning here. I, I, yes, what I, do you want to say? I got, hey, a, I got a question for the older guy. You can't take that away from me. All right, Ken, Ken, okay? we got a question for you, Ken. America works. Wise up. All right, it works. Ricky. Ken. We have a Hello, question for you over here. Yes, what do you want to say? I have, the problem. I have a problem. I mean, a question for the older guy. I mean, the stuff you're saying now, that was happening in the 20s. But the kids in the 90s, they're not going to tolerate racism anymore. Oh, I know. You know what I'm saying? I know. So I know. You might as well. I know. And you, you know might what? as well. You know what? When, when, when the old guy was out on the street, when the old guy was out on the street, we were riding down in North Carolina fighting the Klan with white people, not shooting ourselves in the ghetto, that place you're romanticizing. So don't tell me about the 90s, son. On Ricky's show this Thursday, what's an unwed mother to do? Meet a teenage girl who's trying to decide whether she should keep her baby or, in fact, put it up for adoption. 
some black educators feel that a language barrier is preventing African Americans from getting ahead in society. Members of this outspoken and well-spoken group believe that teenagers need to be taught an alternative to the slang they learn on the streets. This clip from the Jerry Springer show reveals what some of today's kids think of this particular idea. Lady. Revlon wants to talk that way when she's talking with her friends. She just told it's you... Simple. Hold on, Steve. She just said to you that if she has to go and get a job with a bank or something, then she won't talk like that. Yeah. Why can't she... She said that, but she did not. Okay. Okay. But, she said something. They're saying something different here. She okay. said that she wouldn't talk like that if she wanted a job at the bank, but she said that she should talk any way she wants and not be discriminated against. If that's the case, then you ought to dress any way you want for any kind of job and not right. be discriminated well, against. Right, well, that's right. But the reality but, of the, the why reality is you're going to work for IBM. Why are you IBM, getting us for talking this way? If you're going to work for IBM, you can't work like that. I wouldn't hire you. I wouldn't hire you. I wouldn't hire you. I want to talk the way I want to talk now. I don't want to talk like everybody else. I want to be my own. You know what? I wouldn't hire you. Right now, everybody. Because you're not being your. You, are you, you not being your. You're not being who you are. Do you know who I am? No. Right, exactly. You don't know who I am. You don't know who I am. Don't okay, say wait a I'm second. Because you know I'm what? talking like this. I got an idea. I'm Jerry Springer, and right now it's my show. So hold on. What do you say? So he's slurring, isn't he? Revlon and her two friends there, Lancome and Mary Kay say that slang is the true language of black people and, of course, the, uh, the dairy industry as well. Take a look at this extra footage. We can't, we can't just walk up and say, hey, what's up? I got my butter whip last <laughs> they night. They want to say what we're saying, so... Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> so. Okay, now, uh, this is the first time that it's going to become real clear that I need a lot of education here, because I'm not understanding... When you said... You you had got your butter whipped last night? Yeah. Get your hair done. Get your hair done. Got your hair got done. Got your hair night. done? Getting uh, your yeah. butter whipped? Yeah. How is my butter doing today, Tom? Give me a oop, oop. Squeaky. Yeah, there he is. Thursday on Jerry's show, tragedy strikes a small, small town in southern Alabama. It'll be a tragedy discussed with the details. Thursday, Jerry Springer. I don't know about you, but this Valentine's Day lover will be saying three little words over and over and over again come the 14th. Tussie mussy time. Tussie mussy time. Tussie mussy time. World's most romantic holiday means different things to different people, but for me and Geraldine Adam Mitch Loffer, it's, I guess... It's kind of a time to express ourselves through the age-old craft of tassie making Ooh. <laughs> anyway, here's uh, Geraldine giving Joan London of Good Morning America a little lesson in tassie-mussie, tassie making Exactly what is a tussie-mussie? So glad you asked. <laughs> Um, Chelsea Mussy is a tiny bouquet of herbs and flowers, and every one of them has a meaning in the old-time language of flowers. You, uh, you already know some floral symbolism, Joan. Like uh, what? Red roses mean I love you. That to, well, that's one we all know. To okay. extend the peace, the branch, the olive branch of peace. Peace, mm -hmm. right. The Victorians knew dozens of meanings of flowers, and they would compose messages according to the flowers that they put in their Tussie Mussy. Well, I have... A ro several roses in my tussie mussy here, but what do these other things mean? Uh, carnations, the okay. red means passion, and marjoram means blushes. We put in some uh, fern for fascination and ivy for fidelity. Oh, all right. Now, show us how you make one because it's I'm not actually as hard as it looks. It's easy to make tussie mussies. It's tussie mussy time. It's t <laughs> Uh, if you would like to pick up a copy of Geraldine's book, and I don't see why you wouldn't, Tussie Mussy, the Victorian art of expressing yourself in the language of flowers and herbs. It is available. Obviously, our own little Tom McNamara picked up his copy because he has absolutely been going nuts lately here in the studio. You give him a little parsley, a little flowers, some baby's breath, he goes like a turbo engine, just putting little bits and pieces together. He's just, well, look at him go now. That's, uh, yep. <laughs> oh, now, see, look at You're that. You're swell. No, thank you. That is really... 
This Thursday on Good Morning America, Dan Aykroyd will be dropping by to talk about his latest film, My Girl 2. After this break, Shirley flexes her flanks and some guests on the Mo Gaffney Show discover the joys of X-rated love toys in a moment. What about your coat? We're back. You're watching Talk Soup. Tama Lee Webb was a troubled child. She had a bit of a weight problem. And to make matters worse, I should say much worse, her brothers and other siblings used to call her cruel names like Bubble Butt and things like that. Turning tragedy into triumph, Tama Lee got her body in shape and created the infamous Buns of Steel exercise program. Here she is now showing Shirley how this unique fitness regime works for her and just might work for you. If I was going to come up to you and slug you in the stomach, what would you do besides hit me back? You can, you're right, you'll contract the stomach. So that's what I want you to do here and here. Hear the beat? You're going to contract together, together, together. Now just squeeze it as hard as you can. Come on, squeeze. We're talking Shirley, about... put your top up and let's get a... Let's see if she's squeezing. Is she squeezing? Yeah. Right cheek and left cheek, one at a time. Come on, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Now double time, right and left. Wait a minute, Tammy Lee, I gotta do one at a time? Yeah, one at a time. I don't know how to do that. Yes, you can. Hold on, okay, I think I got it now. He's checking it out here. I'm telling you. Keep an eye peeled for Tama Lee's upcoming video, Building Tighter Assets. Later on, sure. Is that a joke? <laughs> Building Tighter Assets. Later on, Shirley tried to do some sit-ups herself, and uh, this is what we found. <laughs> call security, please. Somebody call security! On Thursday, show me people who swear on a stack of Bibles they were cured by faith healers. That'll be Thursday. They aren't the type of toys Santa puts in your stocking now, are they? Unless, of course, you're the type of person who hangs fishnets off the old mantel place. <laughs> this guest from the Mo Show that you're about to meet right now specializes in selling paraphernalia, sexual paraphernalia, Let's join her. She demonstrates some of her top-selling items with the help of some amazed, stunned, and somewhat confused audience members. Now we have the butterfly kiss. Come on, you got to listen to all of these. This one is doesn't really look like a real vibrator, but it has a little butterfly on the end. You can just imagine at night someone playing with this on you, leading down your body and stimulating different parts of your body. This is a butterfly kiss. This is actually a massage mitten. This is our super deluxe mitten. Doesn't look exciting, but this is the way I get a lot of women to introduce a bedroom toy into their home. They bring this home and every man loves a massage, correct? Full body massage, but inside this one we have a vibrator. So once he is nice and relaxed, she's gonna pull this little vibrator out start teasing him with it. I see. And with any luck, she's going to get the benefit from it later. And this is hey. the little rib. This is our super deluxe mitt. Now we're going to move on to what we call the cream of the crop down in Louisiana. This is called a rabbit pearl. As you can see, it's little pearls in it. And I'd rather a strand of these than a strand of real pearl. What I want you to do is give me your right hand like you're going to shake hands with me. <laughs> Another happy customer. When did we start talking about this on network television? <laughs> when did that begin? I don't know. But I do know, and I can say with almost an unbelievably high degree of certainty, that Thursday Mo will meet teenagers who are gay and proud of it. Oh boy, see, there you go. Including a young man who fought to start a gay support group on his high school campus. We'll take a break and be back with one last highlight in a moment. 
Get those heavenly hips a shaking, folks. It's belly dancing next. Turning your TV set into the most jaded appliance in the house. This is Talk Soup. We're back. Hey, Greg, what are you doing on Valentine's Day? Well, while the rest of the country is snuggling up with a special loved one, I'll be snuggling up next to Conan O'Brien, Tom. Yes, indeed, this Monday, the 14th, Valentine's Day, if you're in the swinging Big Apple of New York City, come on down! I'm going to actually do the uh, Conan O'Brien show, so if actually you live in New York or you're going to be out there in the big city, come on by, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. And I'm a lonely guy, what can I tell you? We're going to leave you now with this Vicki Lawrence. Last week she was taking dancing lessons from Charo. This week it's belly dancing tips. I'm Greg Kinnear. We'll see you tomorrow. In the words of Whitney Houston. Yeah, I know, but your butt's cute, huh? Mine is so frightful. We can show slides of my last summer vacation on it. Okay, now, the most important thing is your posture. So lift your rib cage and stand up straight and bend your knees mm -hmm. and shift your weight. We're going to do some side-to-side -side hips. <laughs> Very good. Now do a little circle around. Mm -hmm. All right, Mickey. Very okay. nice. Very nice. Okay, I feel let's... like... <laughs> Get me to end about a, a circle? So put your legs together. Put your legs together. Your... Keep your legs together, girl. Keep your legs together. <laughs> it's always still ready when you're going down. Y&R, B&B, AMC, GH, if this means anything at all to you, and I know it does, then you'll want to stick around and watch Pure Soap, packed with highlights from all of your favorite shows. It's coming up next. Could you pass the Twinkie, please?